Do you want to learn how to make loose tenon joinery like this? Without a Festool domino? Using just a jig and a router. I'm going to show you how to make this jig and how to use it. Welcome back to the wood shop. My name's Brett. Currently I'm working on building a chess table and I'm using mortise and tenon joinery. And this is a table of my own design, so I'm researching to make sure that I'm doing it right. And I came across a video by Tamar from 3x3 Custom, and she had made this jig. And I thought, that's exactly what I need, because I need very precise placement of not only floating tenons, but also sliding dovetails. So I ordered her plans, which are only five bucks, and I'm going to show you how I use those plans to make this jig and how I'm going to use it in my project. The first thing to do is to work on the platform by cutting all the pieces to rough length. Cut them a little oversized for now. They'll be trimmed to final length after the glue up. Then rip them to rough width. Again, this is oversized for now. Their dimensions don't need to be perfect at this point. The next piece, on the other hand, needs to be very precise. This is the spacer that will determine the opening in the jig. This piece needs to be the exact width of the guide bushing you plan on using so there's no slop in the jig. To get this piece to be the exact width of the guide bushing you're using, in my case I'm using a 5 8 inch outer diameter bushing, we'll use some calipers to get this measurement. I can use two setup blocks to get the same measurement without having to eyeball it. Before cutting the actual piece, do some test cuts on some scrap wood so you can dial in the perfect thickness. Once you have that dialed in, then you can rip the actual piece and cut it in half to create two spacer pieces. Temporarily clamp all the pieces together and then test fit the guide bushing to make sure that it's a tight fit before gluing anything together. Another thing to do before gluing up is to score a center line on the inside edge. This is just easier to do now before it's all glued together. Use a marking knife, taking very light passes at first, and then I'll use that knife line to make a crisp line with a chisel. And then fill that in with pencil or pen so you can see it very clearly. This center line will become very useful when actually using the jig. The opening in the middle of the jig should be four inches long. You can use one of your test scrap pieces from earlier, cut that to four inch length, and then use that as a perfect spacer when gluing it up. You can also mark a center line on that scrap spacer and line it up with the center line you scribed on the inside edge of the platform piece to make sure everything is glued up right where it should be. And just clamp it up. I used my guide bushing as I was tightening my clamps to dial in the fit. And then we'll just leave that to set up for a while. While the glue is drying on the platform, you can start to work on the fence piece. Trim it to rough length and width at this point in anticipation of tear out from the router bits. I'm using some 8 quarter cherry for this. All the clamps and fixtures are going to attach to the jig using special hardware that has a dovetail shape on them. These dovetail slots are very easy to cut with a dovetail router bit. These cuts do not need to be placed perfectly. They're not an integral part of making the jig work squareness wise. So you don't have to worry too much about getting the exact location of these. To avoid tear out though, there's an optimal order of operations. Make the shorter slots going across the grain first, then route the long slots going with the grain second. This is the best way to avoid tear out in the middle of your board. With all these cuts, I used a piece of scrap behind the workpiece to minimize tear out on the back side. Now that the slots are routed, you can cut it to final length and width by taking up the same amount of material from either side. The squareness on the end grain doesn't matter much, but you will want to make sure that those edge grain cuts are perfectly square to the face where the slots are routed. At this point, the glue is probably dry on the platform. Whoops, I guess I haven't waxed my countertop recently enough. Should have put down some parchment paper first. Oops. Shoot. <laughs> now you can mill it to its final half inch thickness and then use the fence that you made as a reference for how long to cut the platform. Don't cut it to width yet.
The platform of the jig gets those same dovetail slots, one on each end of the board. There might be a tear out on those cuts too, so wait until after you route the slots to cut it to final width. In order for the jig to work properly, the distance from the edge to the opening needs to be consistent through its length. So use some calipers to make sure all the edges are parallel. Now you could stop here and this would be a jig that would work for you with a guide bushing in your router. We've got zero play, so you could clamp this anywhere on your workpiece and make a slot with your router. But we're going to keep moving with Tamar's plans and make a fence for this. Add a center line along the bottom of the platform using the center line you already scribed on the inside edge before glue up as a reference. Fill in the scribe line with the, some pencil as I did before so you can see it clearly. A center line also needs to be scribed along the length of the bottom of the platform. This can be done with a wheel marking gauge, and you know it'll be perfectly centered if you reference both edges. And then fill those lines in with pencil as well. Drill and countersink holes on both edges of the platform for the screws that will hold the width stoppers. I had to get creative here since I don't have a half inch countersink bit. So I used a combination of bits to accomplish the same thing. Now use the actual dovetail slots you routed on the underside of the platform as a guide for where to drill the through holes on the edge of the fence. These holes need to line up with the slots since this is how you'll be mounting the fence to the platform. Drill out the through hole from both edges so that they meet in the middle. So I got this threaded rod, it was 12 inches long so I cut it in half and now I'm going to put thread locker on one end and put these uh, dovetail track nuts and permanently lock those into place because they'll be sliding in this and this is how the fence will connect to the jig. Never actually worked with this stuff. Uh, do you have to open it? Turns out you gotta cut the tip off of this applicator. And now I'm working on the width stoppers and alignment fences. This might be easier if you join the jig to the fence. I'm just using the top part of the jig with some double stick tape and putting it on to make the slots in the width stoppers. So I'm just following the steps in the plans and that's the step I'm on. And now it's done and ready to be used. So now I've got finish on everything and I'm putting in the hardware and I'm noticing some things that I think I want to change. These are quarter 20 machine screws. One thing I didn't hear in Tamara's video or see in the plans was how long these machine screws should be. What I have here is an inch and a half and that's just enough. So inch and a half, two inches, if you can find inch and three quarters. A lot of that's going to depend on how thick everything is. These stop blocks are half inch thickness and so is the jig itself. So there's an inch plus you need some threads for the nut. So inch and a half works, but the issue I'm kind of running into is as you're tightening it down, because it's just a screw, it's spinning freely. And the whole point of a, of a thumb screw or a, what do you call this? A star nut, I guess maybe, is for it to be tool free. So you would have to put like a Phillips screwdriver on the bottom while you're tightening on the top to get it nice and tight. Cause you don't want these, once they're tightened down, you don't want these to slide around at all. 
because that'll change the dimensions of, of the mortise that you're making. Another thing that I, I might change if I were to do this again, depending on how wide you make your slots, um, it only gives you about an inch and a half of travel. So that's the widest you could make a mortise, which is probably fine for, for most cases if all you're doing is mortising. But I plan to use this to make sliding dovetails as well in the chest table that I'm working on. And I'm going to have to reposition in this jig to get the length that I need. So I might make this jig a little bit wider, a little, a little bit longer, and make the space a little bit wider. Um, and also this edge doesn't leave a lot because now my plan is, now that I see that these machine screws spin freely, um, I want to put in some T-nuts that have these little spikes on them. You see that? Instead of a countersunk trumpet head, um, I think that's what you call it, machine screw, I'm going to have this T-nut in the bottom to receive the machine screw from the top. And that way it won't spin freely and you can tighten it down as much as you need to so that these don't move. So you, even though I have this one finger tight and it's spinning on the bottom, I can still move it. And if you're gentle with your router, that's fine. But if something goes, sometimes routers can get away from you, you know. Uh, another change in hardware that I made, kind of out of necessity because I ordered the wrong size threaded inserts. If, um, if you're making this optional fence and the plans call for threaded inserts on the back of, of this part of the jig, the fence, you would put threaded inserts in here. I ordered uh, too small of a size and it did not fit the hardware, um, the, the star knobs that I ordered. Part of that was my mistake, but I also just followed the links in Tamar's video. Uh, and that took me to the page and I just ordered what was what the page took me to so So my plan B I instead of going out and getting more hardware I just kind of looked around the shop to see what I had and um, I had some feather boards and some other things that had these um, T nuts That are quarter 20 and so I just made an oval recess for the T nut and I put the hole all the way through the fence and that works with the, um, the these star knobs were already with the T-nuts. It's just, I, I robbed a feather board for these. And then because this is an oval, it won't spin in its hole. I have it just recessed so it's flush. So I'm gonna make some of those changes and then we'll demonstrate how this thing works. Okay, so here's how the pieces go together. We've got through holes on this. And just drop those in. And thread these on. I'll speed that up. I might end up trimming those. We'll see. And they're a little bit long. And then these go in this dovetail on each side. You can see I put the T nuts in here. This is the bottom side of the mortise jig. Tighten that down a bit. And then that can clamp here. You can put your workpiece in here and you can clamp it to the side of your table or you can put it in a vise. I'm using a washer. You might not have to use a washer, but I'm gonna go ahead and use washers. It fits. And we can get that. That's nice and snug. Now here's how to set it up. The offset will determine the distance between the edge of the workpiece to the center of the mortise. Typically a mortise is made in the center of a workpiece, so the offset is usually set to half the thickness of your workpiece. Let's say you're using 3 quarter inch thick material, then you'll set your offset to half of that, which is 3 eighths of an inch. You can do this in one of two ways. You can use a combo square against the front edge of the platform and adjust the ruler so that the desired offset is past your center line. So we'll take the distance to the center line and add 3 8 of an inch and get that even across the length of the fence and then lock down the fence knobs. Or without using any math or numbers you can simply make a center line on your workpiece 
and line it up with the center line on the underside of the platform. Now we need to set the width of the mortise. So whether you're using shop-made loose tenons or you purchase them pre-made, you'll have to decide how wide the mortise will be. The width of the mortise is determined by the placement of the width stoppers that are screwed onto the top of the platform. First, mark out the desired width of your mortise onto the workpiece, making sure to also draw a center line. Then line up that center line with the center line that's built into the inside edge of the jig. Using a dovetail clamp in the dovetail slots, clamp that piece to the fence. I've got my lines marked out for center and the outer edges of the tenons, and I've also marked the inside. But before we put the work pieces on the jig, I want to say a word about depth. Because the jig is a half inch thick, you lose a half inch of capacity with your router bit. So you're limited to how deep you can go to make your mortise. I don't think a regular bit's gonna get all the way to an inch. The other thing about depth is I have a Bosch router and this is how the guide bushings for the Bosch look. This is just the standard bushing. It, this 5 8 bushing protrudes below the jig. So if you put your workpiece in here, you wouldn't be able to get your router all the way down. For that reason, you need to get a low profile bushing. You can see this one doesn't protrude. It goes only about halfway. This is a, a quarter inch bushing and again a half inch slot. Now you're going to have to remove the guide bushing from your router base plate so you can easily see the router bit. And then slide the router over so that the outside edge of the bit lines up with your cut line so you can get your desired mortise width. And then lock down one of the width stoppers on the top of the platform. Just an FYI, the width of the mortise should be ever so slightly wider than the width of the loose tenon that you're planning on using. Here's how I do it. Repeat the process for the width stopper that is on the other side of the platform. Then we need to set the depth of the cut. Typically the depth of the mortise will be a little bit deeper than half the length of the loose tenon you're using to make room for glue. You can easily set this up by using the depth stop function on your router base. Plunge the router down until the router hits your workpiece. Then use a spacer bar or a piece of scrap the correct thickness to set the depth setting. Install the guide bushing back in your router base plate and then it's ready to be used. If you're using multiple pieces for a project, you can add stops to the fence so that all the mortises will be routed to the same exact location for all your parts. Now, you don't want to go the full depth all at once. Routing mortises builds up a lot of heat, which can prematurely dull your router bit. So slide your router to one side, and then plunge the full depth, making a starter hole. And then bring your router back up, and slide it to the opposite side, and plunge it all the way down, making a stopping hole. Now you can connect those two holes by taking shallow passes until the whole mortise is routed. Now clamp the mating piece to the fence by using the center lines again, or by using that fence that you set up. And then just repeat the process. If done correctly, the loose tenon will be perfectly placed to join the two pieces. If you make additional slotted fence pieces that are rounded on one end, you can even make positive stops for angled pieces. You've seen that I've been using a full-size router with this jig. I should also mention that you can use a trim router for this as well, as long as you have the plunge base for that trim router. I don't have a plunge base for my trim router, so I'm using the full-size router, and it totally works. I should also mention that I have links in the description below this video for the plans on how to build this, as well as links to all the hardware and accessories that you would need to put this thing together. And now I'm going to use just the top half of this jig without the fence to route a sliding dovetail on the side of my table leg with the assistance of another router jig that I had built previously. Until next time, my friend, be safe and love each other. Uh, did I say that right? I'm going to show you how to make this jig and how to use it. Oh, come on.